welcome back to my channel so today i have a new topic for you on conversion disorder this this is a disorder basically related to neurological symptoms so let me give you more details about this particular disorder today so it is a neurological disorder as i told you where a person may experience a physical or sensory problem so basically he may have issues with uh, walking he may have numbness blindness deafness so these are the usual things which are seen in these kind of uh, patients basically okay so uh, sometimes you might have heard that uh, some people fall and they have a uh, they don't have actually any hurt but still your hand will pain okay something like that so this is something uh, like that no much uh, uh, reasons for it but definitely there is a pain which cannot be neglected okay so these happens in Uh, people who are more emotionally and psychologically stressed so everybody of us require some stress for make doing work so that is called as eu stress but these people are very very emotional and psychological uh, stress they take in very much because of which they, it might lead to a physical response and the physical response at the later stages can even be paralysis so this is very rare okay not very very commonly seen but this is there okay and it is more uh, predominantly seen in women when compared to men and there is a history like if the people are too much emotional they have a history of emotional stress they have a very hard time to talk about their feelings then definitely these people are at more risk okay so there is a significant distress that can happen because of this disorder so because of which i told as i told you they are very very emotionally connected and that can lead to issues they feel that uh, medical professionals don't believe them because they tell that it pains but when they do a x ray or something like that you may not get any um, thing that they may not understand whether what is happening to this patient so there is a confusion there because of which uh, the uh, the patients usually feel that they are not believed okay so this can lead to a lot of issues because of which it might lead to worsening symptoms so mental health issue this is something to do little bit with mental health issue at, as well as if they are having problems with depression and other thing this can be even more uh, dangerous okay so it is not very common when you see statistics you can just have a look here approximately 4 to 12 people out of so many uh, patients right like, so if you have so many patients out of that only 4 to 12 will have this particular disorder so this is just to show you a person okay this is just like a case study so a 25 year old uh, patient had come for this diagnosis so they had no much abnormalities but he was unable to move his arms and legs okay so that is why you have put a cross mark here not able to move so that is why they were then uh, recommended for to check if they have any conversion disorder and that was the case of conversion disorder so basically you will have one or more neurological symptoms because of which you are not able to maybe walk you are not able to talk you know you cannot see so these are few symptoms which comes under this category so more details on the symptoms as i told you movement is difficult you are not able to smell or you are not able to talk properly and uh, sometimes you may have difficulty in swallowing you may have tremors not able to stand properly not able to concentrate like ba basically your memory loss cognitive difficulties will be there in these patients they have a loss of balance numbness is there uh, and if they have depression and anxiety that can be even more severe which can even lead to paralysis so that is the final stage so coming to the mechanism okay so no much mechanism has been understood about this particular disorder but there have was a study which was done at geneva university in switzerland and according to them uh, the main mechanism for this disorder is there is a disruption that is happening in the brain which is very very minimal okay not like too much disruption in the brain some parts of the brain which are involved in some mechanisms basically those part of the brain which are involved in functioning like your muscles and senses that there is some uh, changes that is happening because of those changes it can lead to this disorder okay so to that was understood only after studies and they have done few mri imaging and from that imaging they got to know that there is some uh, variations in the activity of the brain so basically might be less activity in some region and more activity in some more region okay so this unusual activity which is seen in some parts of the brain mostly with leading to uh, functioning like your muscles and senses that is leading to issues okay so in this patient they saw that there was increased dorsolateral 
prefrontal cortex, uh, cortex activity. Okay, so this region usually whatever activity is there in normal people, there was little bit increased activity in that region and hypothalamus activity is one more region in the brain which has few activities, there there was decreased activity. So there was variation as I am telling you, variation in this activity is leading to complications. So dorsocortal whatever I told you here, they have strong emotions that are felt about the traumatic event. So we all have uh, like when we have any pain, we have that emotions, okay. But these emotions in this patient will be very, very high compared to a normal patient. And when compared to a hypothalamus, hypothalamus activity is to repress the memories of a traumatic event. So if you have a fall, your hypothalamus has the capability to reduce the pain, okay. So it has the efforts to reduce the traumatic effect, okay. But here what is happening, this hypothal uh, hypo, uh, uh, hippocampus sorry hippocampus activity is reduced okay so because of the decreased activity it is not able to suppress or repress the effects of the traumatic event so because of these unusual activities it leads to a lot of complications so coming to the risk factors so if you are too much stressed you have anxiety if you have a family member having this kind of neurological condition or you had a history of physical or sexual abuse or you were neglected in your childhood so these can be some risk factors where you might end up with these kind of disorders. So coming to the complications, you can have pain, you can have anxiety, you can have depression, you can have fatigue. So these are few complications if not treated at the right time. So this conversion disorder what I am talking to you today, it can happen even in children. So there is something called as pediatric conversion disorder also. So even here the symptoms can be almost the same. And even the risk factors can be the same, but it can happen even in children. So we should be aware about that. And prevalence is very, very low, like 1 to 3 percent. Okay, so this is again a case study to tell you about a 12 year old boy. So he had gait disorder. So gait disorder is something to do with not able to walk properly. Okay, so he had a history of uh, nausea, weakness, he couldn't sleep properly. And he had inability to move his right elbow, okay. He was not able to move his right elbow because of which he was missing his classes. He was not attending the school basically, okay. So later uh, they wanted to know, find out the reason what is happening to this kid. So they were, uh, he was suggested to this, uh, to check if he has this disorder. And based on the uh, studies, they got to know that he had solatic difficulties, okay. Solastic difficulties means not able to cope up in the school. Okay, so basically uh, what happened is the reason for this may be he was in a particular school and he had to change his school for some reason and he missed his friends a lot. So he was a lot of emotional stress was there in him. Apart from that he loved one subject and the, there was a case that the teacher humiliated him and he threw the book outside the classroom. So this became even more emotional stress for him because of which the brain action again the variations in those regions that I told you that had happened to him because of which he had this disorder. So it takes a lot of time to come back to the normal. So psychotherapy can help to some extent. So it took approximately 10 months for him to come back to the normal state. Okay, so this is a case study of uh, conversion disorder. So when definitely you have to see a doctor, if you have the symptoms of uh, having uncontrollable pain, which you cannot explain if they do uh, some tests, they feel that nothing is wrong, x-rays are fine, everything is fine, still you have pain, then definitely you think you have to consult your doctors here and uh, it is better to treat at the early stage otherwise it can even lead to paralysis as I told you. So coming to the diagnostic options, they may do few physical examinations, they may do some uh, testing like they may give you a questionnaire, uh, they may try to find out what is happening to you, how do you feel, so those kind of psychiatric exams can be taken. Apart from that, they can even do a CT scan or MRI scan to see the activities of your brain if there is any variation. Certain times they even suggest a blood test to see if there is any metal toxicity, okay? Because we know that uh, pollution is there everywhere and metals are one thing which can have a negative impact on your brain. So neurological disorders can be seen because of metal toxicity also. So that is why they even want to check that. So met, uh, blood tests are also suggested and certain times they even have something called as biofeedback. So this is a mind-body therapy. So they try to give you some suggestions and they see if your body is responding positively to that. So they have some instruments for that, biofeedback, where they give that feedback, okay. So once they give you some therapy and you 
become better the feedback of that is given and that is how they check if you are improving or not so combined efforts are very very required here it is not just the neurologist who can help you even psychiatrist and mental health experts are required so it is a combination efforts of many people so counseling can help so a lot of counseling hypnotherapy family therapy also can help so if you have some people who are very close to you, you who you can talk to then even they can help you in some way apart from that speech therapy because some people as i told you they have difficulty in speaking when they are in this this, this disorder basically so speech therapy to some extent can help and ways to reduce your stress so if you have a lot of stress see what excites you what entertains you try to concentrate on those uh, things and definitely that can help you so distraction techniques also can be used so based on your interest whichever can help you in distracting yourself from the stress that also can help so coming to the take away messages we have seen uh, completely about conversion disorder what exactly is this so learning about your disorder can definitely help because once you know you have the disorder you can think of how to uh, avoid it how to prevent it so those kind of thing, strategies you can plan early diagnosis will definitely help and one more thing is it is not contagious it does not spread from one person to another it is something to do with you okay so this is one more thing which i want to share with you so definitely uh, the person might require support Re regular follow ups might be required because as i told you in the case study it took 10 months for that kid to become normal so definitely consultation is required with the doctors and regular follow up is also very very essential so it is very much required to have a good work and life balance positive relationships are very very important and as much as possible the person should be uh, secure and calm okay so those atmospheres are very very important so that this disorder does not lead to lot of lot of complications so don't forget to take care about yourself so this is what i want to tell you today so one more thing is do's and don'ts so do's are you should believe these uh, people who are suffering from this issue they can ask for help please help them and uh, definitely you should not accuse them of faking like simply telling that it's in your head nothing is wrong with you so those kind of things you should not tell them and definitely you can uh, find different ways of managing your stress So thank you for watching if you feel that this video that i have made for you today is worth watching do watch it do share it and do like it do subscribe to my channel and share this video with maximum people so that if anybody is facing this issue of conversion disorder this video will be of definitely some help to them they might feel better thank you